Hello everyone, in this video I'll show you how to use Logic's Stem Spitter and the CQ18T Digital Mixer to get more control over your backing tracks. Uh, I'll take you step by step and show you how to route tracks from Logic Pro's mixer to the CQ mixer. So the first thing I'll do is load my audio file into um, Logic Pro. So this is the audio that I want uh, to create a backing track for. Um, and to do that, I will just load it in, drag it in. I'll right click on the audio file and then go to processing. And then stem splitter is just right here. So I click on that and it will ask me what I want to separate. And I'll, I'll select all of them and then I'll just click split. This takes about 10 seconds to do. It's very quick. So as you can see, we, can, we have four different tracks. So vocals, drums, bass, and then other, uh, other stuff. So this could be synths or keyboards or strings or anything like that. Um, to assign these tracks now to the mixer, what we have to do is make sure that uh, our uh, audio settings, the mixer is selected. So if I go to my Logic Pro uh, and then settings and audio, I'll have to make sure that the output, output device is set to uh, CQ18T here. Also on the mixer, we'll have to go into the config page, uh, into the USB section and make sure that we're at our stream mode is set to uh, multi-track. So we'll go back to the config page of the inputs and we'll also set the first four inputs because we have four tracks that we'd like this to be assigned to. We'll make the first four inputs USB or SD. So I'll just select the first four inputs uh, and make them USB slash SD. Um, you can have uh, any any inputs you like. So if you want the last four inputs to be the um, USB or, or SD, you can do that. I'll go to my mixer now. And then in here, in the output section, currently they're assigned to bus. What we want to do first of all is make sure that they are mono instead of stereo. We can just do that by clicking on the, the, the input here. And that will make them mono channels. And we'll go bus, output, mono, and then output one. So output one is the first channel on this mixer here. Um, output two will be the second channel or the second track on the mixer. So sorry, give me a second here. Output two, and then output three, and then output four. There we are. Um, if you play these uh, tracks now, we should be able to hear them. We should able to be able to see that there's the signal in the config page section of the mixer. So if I go to my fader page, we'll have the four tracks. So I'll split. If I turn one of them up. So this is just the um, uh, sort of uh, instruments playing. I can add the drums if I'd like. And it's not perfect, but it's like, I mean, it's better than you know, having some control over it. So I've got some bass. And now it sounds kind of all right. So there we are. And you can mix it as you go. So if you think your bass is too much, you can sort of turn it down slightly if you'd like. You can also pan them. There we go. Another bonus that we have is we can transpose things uh, sort of in a better way. Instead of transposing the whole backing track um, with this one, if I wanted, if this wasn't the right key for, for the singer, I'd have to go here, transpose, and then, you know, just minus one or whatever. Uh, but with this, um, the problem with this is that, it, you know, it transposes the drums as well. So it pitches the drums down uh, and so it makes it a bit, a bit muddier. But with this, with the with the stem separated ones, what we can do is select the bass and the other instruments and transpose them, you know, like minus, I don't know, we'll see what it does, minus seven or something. And the drums will stay as they are. I mean, nothing sounds great at minus seven, but you know, at least your drums aren't going to be so sort of super pitched. So 
So you could do that kind of stuff, which is really fun. Really fun. Because the drums don't have any pitch information. Whereas if I was to go here and you know, transpose this minus seven, uh, we'd run into sort of really big problems here. The drums just become inaudible. I mean, you can go plus, um, uh, plus five, we can try to see if that kind of balances it out. That's not too bad, but the drums again, you know, you lose the impact of those drums when you transpose. Whereas here, uh, because we, we are um, transposing the individual parts, it doesn't become super muddy or we don't lose the impact of the drums, which is really important. So if you go like plus five, so it's the same key, but it's just slightly different. You know, our drums are still okay. There we are. Another bonus is that we can um, do some processing uh, within Logic instead of relying on the mixer. Um, the mixer has, you know, EQ and, and compression and stuff, but what we can do is uh, sort of dynamic EQ and, and really, you know, advance processing uh, in the in the in logic pro instead of relying on the mixer so the bass we can just take some of those highs down i think our drums are fine there we go so you know it, it, it sounds really nice Add reverb um, not only within Logic, but we can add reverb in the in the mixer as well. So if you go to a fader page, I go to effects one, and send say uh, track number four into effects one, we get reverb, which is really nice. Which is again makes makes the backing tracks you know a lot more sort of customizable, which is really nice. So that's combining the um, processing of uh, Logic with the processing of the digital mixer, which is great. But yeah, that's just how I've been doing my backing tracks and I just wanted to share this with you. So if you're using backing tracks, let me know how you do it. There are websites out there that let you sort of stem separate for free. Uh, if you don't have Logic or something like that, you can use other doors uh, with the digital mixer, You know, making sure that the outputs are assigned properly. And um, yeah, this is, uh, this is the way I've been doing backing tracks recently, ever since um, Logic introduced the AI feature. It's been very useful. Um, it's not perfect um, and, and it's, it still has a lot of ways to go, but it's really cool that we can do this now uh, where we can have control over um, the individual parts of these tracks. So yeah, I'm looking forward to what this technology can do. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy. Uh, see you in the next video.